I made this vlog video after I got a little ticked off at a local news reporter for stealing my info. Last night I went on his Facebook page and read. I found the link that he had uh, that was up on Google, and uh, I provided him with a link that shows uh, some information about a guy. This is like 17 hours before I just saw the news tonight, who was uh, roaming through our community all day a couple days ago, and uh, turns out he's a child molester. It was easy to find this article, and uh, basically I provided this link to the local news reporter. Uh, tonight I tuned in thinking he would go ahead and uh, use it without crediting me and sure as anything tonight 17 hours later after I gave him the info I'll scroll down this article this is the uh, online version the written version of what he uh, just proudly reported on live television about an hour ago in our town and uh, first of all there's some information that he uh, had dug up but that wasn't much here's the information he got from me right down to the date of the uh, Sun Gazette article. Sure, I'm pretty pissed about this, but it happens all the time in the real world. It's just in a smaller town, a city that I, like I live in, it, it kind of hurts more because you feel like they're getting away with something when they may they may even be familiar with you or someone you know. So it feels like a small town plagiarism might hurt more than uh, something on CNN even. Even though those people are supposed to be held to higher standards, uh, you know, I guess uh, by osmosis since they're just larger communities uh, but it just goes to show I mean that plagiarism is, is always about this is a very very small example of it and I'm uh, not kicking a dead horse here or hitting a dead horse this happens all the time in my community all my letters the editor are printed and everything and I get nothing but negative feedback from trolls online and it's just really discouraging when you see that someone can take something so small and they can pass it off as their own and this kid's building a career. That's how he's starting out. Our news, our local news, has already uh, suffered with negative uh, image problems like bad, bad uh, writing, terrible spelling, a lot of pronouns not even capitalized, simple stuff like that. And you, you can't really see it because unless you actually read the same article on their website. But plagiarism, another thing. This is a minuscule example again. But it just goes to show that it just hurts and it makes you feel bad about your local news people. They purport, they go to some churches you know, they, uh, uh, another local news anchor there, he's a weatherman, uh, would have everyone to believe. In fact, he constantly tweets about being a Christian, and, uh, and yet uh, the news company he works for had to go scrub, uh, legally scrub uh, a leaked video of him uh, a few years ago, about three or four years ago. I found it hilarious where he was, uh, after hours, funning with the cameraman who it turned out he couldn't trust, and uh, he was tweaking uh, the nipples of a, <laughs> it's really not not okay, but of a, uh, a vector a graphic of a breast cancer patient. And this guy, he's such an ass, and in public, I used to hold the door open for him. I know a favorite restaurant he goes to, and... Uh, First two times I ever did it was with my girlfriend. There's a large open foyer for people to entry, the entryway. And the first two times I ever held the door open for this big giant ass, this so-called Christian, he and his heifer crew, I mean his wife and everybody who filed in after him is ginormous. They're freaking huge. These people couldn't buy airline seats, you know, without buying a pair each. And uh, I, already my girlfriend's going out in the parking lot. We were leaving as they were coming in. And I'm like, oh, God, they're slowly going in. It's like watching a herd of cattle come in. And the kicker was, at the end of it, he basically, the last one in, didn't even acknowledge that I'd done anything for him. It's one of those small things, you know? It's not exactly a footloose moment, but it sure as hell stings uh, when you are, you know, one up fronted or, or basically just, sh not shunned, but just stood up in public. It makes you feel really stupid, like you have no recourse. This guy's going to go on the news the next day and look all peachy king, and I'm a Christian. <laughs> I'm not an atheist. If I was, I'd say the same things they do. But this is exactly what people hate about Christians. Their duplicity in public and private. Private. You know, you're in public, you're this guy. Everybody knows you. My mom loves this guy. Hey, he's one of the best weathermen around to this day. There's no doubt. Unimpeachable weather forecast. This guy's one of the best in the region. And freak it. The nation. Okay. But his personal, mor his code of, of behavior is, and this happens a lot in my town, especially towards me. Uh, just talking to my mom on the phone earlier tonight. 
it's a region that it, in Kentucky that is well known to have some problems with uh, intellectualism, we'll say. So, you know, that kind of bleeds over into moral code because if you find you're doing something right around here, you have half a brain. You're going to get hell for it. You're going to catch hell for it. But it's self saying people who are like the footloose parents that go to church the next Sunday and even might even be a preacher. Somebody in the family is a freaking preacher. May even ha handle rattlesnakes. But they're going to go up in a public place and say, look at us. We are so good. And it may not get us to heaven, but that's what we're going to do anyway. And I'm uh, going to those churches. Uh, saw them converted and changed from one type of church, small, family-oriented, very personal, friendly church. Boy, is this meandering now. But anyway, it, it just kind of ramped up at my old church until there's like 5,000 people. It's a freaking recovery church, and they got into almost promoting uh, wealth like Joel Osteen. A uh, respectable minister, great story, Very seems like the friendliest guy in the world. It's hard to believe that guy, but uh, you want to. It's just very interesting how this stuff goes down, and you really will never see an end to it because that's just pe that's just people. That's human nature. It doesn't matter what religion or code of ethics you live by. At some point, you slipped up. I have. I find myself coming and going. I probably want to kick my teeth in sometimes, but most of the time, uh, back to that story about the restaurant. The the lesson learned was the second time I opened the door for this menagerie, uh, these three people came in and the same shit. The last fat ass ambled in. I'm holding the damn door open. Both doors, mind you. I'm holding one open after my girlfriend. Hi, honey. You're going out to the car. I'll be there in a minute. And then the, see this fat ass amble in. He's big. You know, they need another meal. And uh, as I let the door close, they just weren't. They didn't even give me an acknowledging move. Like, thank you. And I thought, that's how you treat people in public. From the first one, the well known local celebrity, to his last in his entourage each time acted like I was the doorman. There's no doorman at this restaurant. That's the way they treat other people. And they're going to go on the news and every day, day and out, uh, force people to watch their online behavior and then their Twitter account saying, Jesus loves you, Jesus loves you, and all that stuff. And I'm like, yes, if you just want me to go to your church, I wouldn't go to your church because I'd be stuck as a doorman. You know, tithe your 10%. Oh yeah, you're expected to service tithe. And you know, at the end of holding the door open for a thousand people when there's an automatic door opener there anyway, you find out everybody's going out to the lake, and you're like, oh, that makes me, that's just imbibes me with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, it does. I shouldn't be sarcastic about that. There is a Holy Spirit, but there is a bunch of lies, too. <laughs> so, basically, uh, plagiarism led to this rant, and if people were more honest, there would be less rants, and I'd be a lot calmer. So, the end of the story, the, the third episode of me going out with my girlfriend at this great local Mexican restaurant. Yeah, I don't think they'll mind me saying it's it's uh, Puerto Vallarta. I'm sure everybody, uh, many regions have a similar uh, franchise, but ours is the best. I gotta tell you, and Bowling Green is like always scored up at the top of those cities across the United States. You only see their name like once every year when they 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 get the uh, re they get the award or in the top ten list of the best places for the most restaurants, not the best places, <laughs> but uh, m most fat ass cattle herd people going in on Sunday. Look at me. I mean, I got moves hitting the floor here. But uh, I grew up with that stuff, so we have some good food. We have a lot of good restaurants. A lot of people come here for that, and it just propounds the effort. You get more restaurants coming in. Anyway, third time was a charm. I told my girlfriend after that second time, I catch up to her at the car, and I'm like, honey, I am so sorry. This guy's an ass. He's not like he pretends to be, and I am so hurt. I ever clipped. That is nothing close to Michael Myers, but Mike Myers. But but the third time I planned that if I, I was going to hold the door open like a stooge for this guy one last time. And yes, I do relish the moment. In retrospect, it, it was now. It was not nice. Don't you're not supposed to do this. Even an atheist could do better just holding the door open, not expecting anything in return. The third time though, I, I, I told my girlfriend I was going to teach him a lesson. And after she quit looking at me like you're not going to shoot them, are you? I was like, no. Come on. Have I ever shot anybody? The thunks you hear in the basement, when you leave, they go away. Those people should know better. But seriously, I told her I was going to let the door slam in their fat faces. And that's the only joy I was going to get out of it. And I did this thing. I waited until Fat Ass and his crew uh, expected. I could see it in their eyes. It's like watching a cattle drive going and eat your hamburger in front of you. Yes, we were leaving, but it just so happened. Th three times in one year, this happened. The third time. 
I let the door slam in uh, his face. I didn't want to get his wife. That would be rude. Against my code, of course. And uh, who knows the second guy. I don't know if his dad or somebody, her dad. No, I want, I want to pick this one off at the top, you know. Get the alpha jerk. And I let the door slam in his face. I did not slam the door in his face. That is like a no-no. You know, it's a butterfly effect. You do not act upon your ill will. <laughs> do not do this. But, you know. If you're the guy who's standing between them and this bullshit entitled behavior that they're going to bandy about for the, for the rest of their lives while, you know, purporting to be these good Christian people, <laughs> uh, then yeah. <laughs> Make them appreciate the next guy, the next oaf who does this, the next idiotic fool. So the door slams in their face. You should have seen, again, the look, and I saw the look in their eyes, and if I can invent it, it was like, and then the, when they brown eyes, he must have brown eyes. Whoever it was, it looked right in their eyes. He's about six inches taller than me too. I'm like, hey, that hurt, didn't it? And I was like, oh my god, it's uh. Sadly, that's pretty much the end of the story. I intentionally never went to that particular outlet of that franchise of that restaurant locally again because I didn't want to be that guy. Because what I had done was not going to change those people anyway. That's their way of uh, thinking, and it's uh, they're not gonna learn anything. I don't know if they take an etiquette class on how not to to expect people to hold doors open for your fat butt. But uh, that's my little story. And in a small town, uh, that's kind of like a chin up to self esteem. If you can get that done and get it behind you, and you don't feel like such a miserable slug the next time you're actually doing the same thing they're doing, <laughs> doing in a restaurant. Uh, which will be eating in my case. I, I don't let people hold doors open for me. I even fight the automatic door. I'm like, no, I got this. Uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm joking. But uh, that that little scenario right then could have played out much worse, but it would have been pure imagination. But uh, that's it. I am going to go back and I'm going to add um, a few frames at certain points. <laughs> Uh, that includes stills of what I talked about earlier in this video. <laughs> no, all of a sudden I got angry again. <laughs> I'm just gonna have the. I'm gonna append that that video I talked about the uh, weird science moment with the local weatherman <laughs> right here at the end. If they want me to remove it, I'll do it. But uh, I really think they shouldn't because uh, <laughs> they just shouldn't. It's it's something we should put up on Voyager 3. <laughs> it's priceless. I'd like to clarify it wasn't a breast cancer graphic, but it was a vector still of a woman. And uh, here's where he makes his alpha predator move. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Chuckles. I'm still friends with all the little ladies in town, even if this is going on in the studio. When come in Tokyo. Uh, of course, I don't want that to go anywhere. Bobby, Bobby, if I see this on YouTube, no more canasta for you and Grace on Friday nights. You hear me? Hmm, you know what? This would make a good sex doll. Why don't they make them this way?